Welcome everybody. Today we're going to talk about how to write an experimental design section of a science lab report. So we're going to talk about why the section is included in a lab report, what specifically is included in it, and this video is going to be focusing more on the defining variables part of that, and we'll go over some definitions and examples. So why we include an experimental design section in a lab report is that it's going to allow others to easily replicate our experiment and it's going to make it much easier for you to design the procedure. So I always recommend that kids start with this section of their lab report because once they've already written out like, okay, this is my independent variable, this is my dependent variable, this is what I'm going to keep the same, it becomes much easier to say, like, okay, well, how am I actually going to do that and write the procedure? Okay, so a hypothesis is an educated guess and um, kind of a high school version of a hypothesis is not like, I think because that's more middle school. In high school, we ask for an if then format and I'll show you some examples later down the slide. The independent variable, notice it starts with an I, it's what I, the scientist, am changing in an experiment. The dependent variable starts with a D, and this is the data that depended on what I changed. So D, 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 dependent data depends. The controlled variables is your list. Notice this has an S. So that means that we're coming up with more than one thing. This is my list of all the things that I kept the same in the experiment to make sure it's a really fair experiment. And here's my control group, which is gonna be my comparison group. So in the experimental design section of a lab report, it often also includes the materials list and procedures. I'm not gonna talk about that a lot in this video. I have some videos that you can get links to up here that's specific about other sections of the lab report. And um, you can turn, you can watch those videos for help on that section. All right, so the format, just like all scientific writing, we don't use personal pronouns. As far as whether this should be a list or a paragraph, it depends on the teacher. Uh, so you'll, you'll want to ask your teacher. Okay, so here's a student example of one of my students. They wanted to see the effect of acid rain on various building materials. So they said if the acid rain affects the building materials, then the materials will affect the pH of the vinegar. So basically the pH will change of the vinegar uh, after you put the building material in it if the material is going to be eroded or whatever by the acid. And so the thing that I am changing is the type of building material, what depends on what I changed, the pH. Um, I'm going to compare it to vinegar with rock with not having vinegar in it, or rather the other way around. I'm going to compare it to vinegar without a rock in it and just make sure that the pH of the vinegar doesn't change on its own over time as a comparison tool. Here are the things I'm going to keep the same. And then we have our materials list and our procedure. So here we have another example. How does the mass of the ball affect how far it rolls after leaving a ramp? My hypothesis would be if a ball is heavier, then it will roll further. The independent variables, I'm changing the mass of the ball. What depends on the mass? How far it rolls. What am I gonna keep the same? I'm gonna keep the type of ramp used. I'm gonna have the same starting place on the ramp. I'm gonna keep the diameter of the ball, the type of the ball the same. And um, what am I gonna use for a control group? In this case, I would have an internal control because there's not like a natural like ball rolling down a ramp. Like, I guess you could have the ball sitting on the floor, but you know it's not gonna move. So that would be kind of a silly control group. So just saying like um, 
that you're going to compare each trial to each other is, is a good way to do it. All right, experiment two. If a piece of clay is shaped so it has a large volume, then it will be able to float. The independent variable is the shape. The dependent variable, what data I'm going to collect is, does it sink or not? Controlled variables, same amount of clay, same mass of clay, um, how it's put into the water, how long it's going to be sitting in the water would all be things I'd want to keep the same to make sure it's a fair experiment. So the only thing different is the shape of the clay. Finally, my control group would be, I think I would do a ball of clay in the situation um, because it's more close to like how we normally store clay is in a ball. Um, but there's, that's open for interpretation. Okay, there's more than one like possible correct answer that you could have put there. Experiment three, how does the amount of light penetrating water change with depth? Hmm, the independent variable would be the, would be the depth of the water. The dependent variable would be the data I'm collecting or the light. And the controlled variables are the things, my list, remember variables, it's a list, same pond, same spot in the pond. I want to make sure there's not like a whole lot of waves that might affect, you know, how um, like mixed up things are within the water. Okay. So try to keep it as same as possible. And then for a control group here, usually a control group, you want to basically have something without the independent variable. So um, no water just what's the light out in the air? What's the light reading on that meter out in the air? It would be a fair control group. So some key things to remember. Um, once you define your variables, it's going to be much easier to write your procedure and really to do the whole rest of the lab. I usually recommend that kids check in with their teacher right after they've done this because if they're off in this section, the whole rest of the lab report is going to be poorly done. So it's a good checkpoint to have your teacher evaluate, yes, you have the right independent and dependent variable and control group and control variables. Okay. Um, there, the experimental design itself includes more than just those variables. It might vary a little bit from teacher to teacher, but here's your list of the most common things to include. And of course, remember to avoid using personal pronouns like you would in any scientific writing. So teachers, please consider subscribing. I have a lot of good resources that I think you will find helpful. I have a playlist about all sorts of different topics related to teaching. I often share resources that you can just download and use right on my video descriptions. And I'm working on developing a playlist of remote labs and activities that work whether the kids are in class with you or at home, because that's the reality right now for a lot of people. So please subscribe or give me a thumbs up, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.